this takes us up to one of the most famous philosophers of all time. Socrates. Um, we don't know if he ever wrote anything. We have none of his writings, but we do have writings of people who knew him, particularly three men, Plato, Thucydides, and regrettably the name of the third one escapes me, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, Themistocles, all right, yeah, Plato, anyway. Um, three men who knew him. Socrates is known for his ability to question. In other words, he believed that the, everything you needed to know resided inside you, and all that was needed was someone to question you and bring it out. Now again, obviously Socrates did not know about today's modern day technology. Now, probably none of you know how tightly the nuts on your cylinder head need to be tightened, how they need to be torqued. I don't know on my car how tight it is, but somebody has to know that. Well, if you were to start asking me, hey, how tightly should you torque the heads on your cylinder or pencil head on your car? No matter how many times you ask me that, folks, you're not going to get out of it because it's not in there and I can't get it, I can't get it out. It's not there. But Socrates believed that if you ask a person enough, eventually you get it out of it. Notice if I ask you enough questions, you know, eventually you'll know it. And hey, there is some merit to that. Um, again, um, he believed in question and answer, but also he made the people angry at him. He'd catch a person on his way to court. This person knew his was a better case. So he asked, what's your case? And he tried his best to convince him, hey, your opponent has a better case than yours, you better not go to court. He persuaded many a man not to go to court because he said, if you, once you get there, you're probably going to lose because your opponents can. But he also might be right. I know I have the better case. I know that I'm right. No, you're not. The other fellow is just as right as you are. He thinks he's just as right as you are. He believed that we should engage in self-examination. One of his famous quotes, Know thyself. He said, one of his famous quotes, the unexamined life is not worth living. Now, folks, just from the last two weeks, I read something about persons who spend their time examining themselves or just very selfish and into, I don't know, introverted man, I mean, by word, but just very much and focused on themselves. I mean, hey, again, uh, you can decide for yourself how much of this is right, but I've often wondered to some of these people who engage in criminal activities, do they ever stop and think and wonder, what am I doing? Do I know that what I'm doing is wrong, or do I care? Um, anyway, he questioned authority and questioned Athenian values. To make a long story short, this eventually got him into trouble. He eventually was called before the Council of 500 and he was tried, and the Council of 500 convicted him on the charge of corrupting the youth. Now here is, folks, what you have to understand. Every, I mean, okay, being a parent myself, you are always concerned, will the next, will I be able to impart to my children my values, the things that I really hold dear and value highly, will they take up, take up the torch, you might say, and carry on? And every generation is concerned that somehow the youth will not take up the torch and carry on, that the next generation will not have the ability. The next generation, I mean, you know, hey, I'll tell you, when I was a youngster, a youngster, a lot of the older folks said, I tell you, the youth of today are going to the dogs. I mean, this is what some of the older people, the opinions they had of us. But, so the people are always concerned, and then came Socrates, and he questioned their gods, and questioned their religion, questioned everything about their philosophy, and they finally put him on trial, and he was convicted. Then they took another vote as to whether they'd have the death sentence, but in the meantime, Socrates smart-mouthed the assembly, I mean, I have to say, he smart-mouthed the assembly. 
So where the second vote was overwhelming. The first vote was like 270 to 230 in favor of convicting him. But the death penalty vote was more than 400 to 100 in favor of the death penalty. Because uh, he smart mouthed the assembly. The assembly condemned him to death. So on the appointed day, he drank hemlock like he was ordered to do to according to some accounts, cheerfully drank the hemlock and died. And he had no sooner died than what the people of Athens realized, hey, did we not kill a martyr, kill a great man? Did we not do wrong? And they made something of a hero out of him. And he became an icon of sorts, uh, almost a figure he worshipped. Now, there are some things now about Socrates that have, um, I mean, uh, what, no, wait, two and a half minutes, I can't say. I'm going to continue with him next time. But I want to say this. I mean, to give you some idea of what's coming. If you look up Socrates, on the web, like I have, three out of every four, four web pages will leave this part out. But I think it should be left in. I think it's important. Socrates claimed to be buddy buddies with a demon. Now, uh, every religious group almost believes that there are demons out there that go around and sometimes whisper things into people's ear. Socrates did not believe his demon. In fact, he said his demon was what kept him out of trouble. That his demon kept him thinking pure thoughts and kept him... Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop here and take up with that next time because there's a whole lot more involved. Then we'll take up with Plato, who Socrates taught, and from Plato we'll go to Aristotle. Um, have a good couple of days and I'll